And welcome to the Marcus and Mike show, guys. On today's brown, on, on today's show, I should say, Packers get the win over the Bears. Antonio Brown's saga is still happening in college football. <laughs> Greatest week possibly of of the year so far, even though it's just even though it's just week two. But before we get too far into the show, I gotta welcome my man Marcus to the show. Marcus, we both start our picks 0-1 on the season. Packers did beat the Bears last night, 10 to 3 in a uh Offensively anemic game. Uh, yeah. Let's just go ahead and start you, off you, right after that. What are your thoughts? You were about closer than I am. You you were a lot closer than I was. You picked a low scoring game. You were right on the money. I picked a high scoring game, um, or kind of a, a semi high scoring game, and you were much yeah. closer than I was. Yeah. I mean, um, the the uh, the reason why I picked the Packers to only score nine points was because Aaron Rodgers did not take a preseason snap whatsoever. So we had no idea what the offense was going to do. He had no no idea what the offense was, was going to do. And were, and and Mitchell Trubisky didn't complete or didn't attempt to pass in the preseason. I like either. So that was the that's reasoning what I'm saying. behind, behind you that. You were one point off. <laughs> right. They but uh, 10 instead of nine. You're one point off. You were 100 percent right in your Aaron Rodgers stuff. Absolutely. Except for Mitchell Trubisky, uh, I've been kind of hard on him. I guess you could oh. say in the off season, what he went. 26 for 45 for 228 yards with one interception this past night. Uh, is this the uh, true Mitchell Trubisky that we're going to see? I hope not. God, God awful if it is. Um, that would be horrific. Uh, I mean, this guy, and, and I don't, the coaching staff was terrible too. I mean, this guy went back to pass like 50 something times. Yeah, 45 he got sacked attempts. Of, yep. Yeah, 45 attempts, but then he got sacked a few times, and yeah. so so yeah, I mean, I think I think they called about 50 pass plays and about 13 running plays. Not a good balance there, people. No. And 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 Mitchell Trubisky was absolutely horrific. That offense was terrible. Green Bay Packer defense is a lot better. Maybe you know we can say that. Um, but man, Trubisky was is. I hope this is just the week one jitters get the kinks out of the way because. If this is anything to come for the season, if this anything was going to look like, uh, the Bears will be six and ten, five and eleven, real quick. I mean, I I just don't know if you and I are going with the offensive game plan for the for the Chicago Bears. Right. The last thing we're going to do is have our quarterback throw it, step back to pass fifty times. A quarterback that's not Dan Marino, yeah. that's not Patrick Mahomes. It is going to be we're going to be at 30, 35 passes and twenty five, thirty rushes. Yeah, and, and we're like, not going to. Yeah. Yeah, and, and just to hit on your point there, like I, I I think the NFL average should should be about thirty-five uh pass attempts per game. You know, yeah. slow it down a little bit because it is such a offensive jug of, of a juggernaut team that you need to keep your defense off the field just to get them a like a like a like a little bit of a break. But with all that being said, the only bright point of the Chicago Bears last night was Allen. Robinson, he had seven receptions for a hundred yards. So if you right. guys have him on your fantasy team, he he's the only one that broke six points all like all just like all night. But with all that being said, your coaching point that you just brought brought up, hundred percent spot spot on. What is Matt Matt Nagy for the Chicago Bears opening up the up the game with some T formation and they fumble the ball? They're lucky they got that ball back. Because, yeah. like, if they would have lost that fumble, uh, I believe they were inside their 20 at that point in time, maybe 30. I can't can't, can't re, 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 right. remember, sure. The Packers may have blown that game or open, blown that game open early uh, with a yeah. touchdown and just the way their offense was, like, looking. Yeah. I mean, it, it could have been game over. And the, and the only reason why, you know, the, it, it was a close game is because the Chicago Bears defense is pretty good. They, yes. they, they confused Aaron Rodgers the first quarter and – Aaron Rodgers kind of got clicking a little bit, but not really. That was not an Aaron Rodgers game. Uh, he knows it. That's why in post game he kept on saying we have a defense. He's very happy about that. So once the offense gets clicking for Aaron Rodgers and the boys, um, you know they they they, they maintain that, that that defensive prowess there. Um, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Um, but uh, yeah, Chicago defense pretty good holding Aaron Rodgers to ten points. You said nine. You were one point off. And another thing, real quick. Chicago went for it on fourth and ten. Did you watch that? Were you awake for that? I I, I fell asleep toward Checked toward the end of the game. Yep. Chicago had a fourth and ten at the thirty-two or thirty-three. Could have been a fifty-yard field goal. Okay, if you have an NFL kicker, you, sh you listen. A fifty-yard field goal. I don't care what level you're on is not a guarantee. Right. But you're an NFL kicker, man. You should be able to kick that 
And they did the worst thing, though. You can either kick the field goal or you can pooch punt it, get him down there to the 5 or 10-yard line and make Aaron Rodgers go length of the field. Right. They did neither. They went for it on 4th and 10 and, and blew that one. I think uh, I think Trubisky ran for about two yards up the middle. So they blew that call. There was three things you could do there, and they picked the wrong one. Two of them would have been right, <laughs> right, and they picked the wrong one. They picked the wrong one the whole night. If you're a Chicago Bears fan, you have got to be sick. You've been preparing all summer for the Green Bay Packers coming to your house, Soldier Field. They were honoring the 85 Bears. It's time to kick the Green Bay Packers' ass. You were favored, and you blew it. You're right. And you scored three points. Yeah. There's yeah. guys that had more beers in the first quarter than the Bears <laughs> had points. Oh, man. God. Oh. I mean, I, I would if I drank, I, I would have been drunk. They'd had to carry me out of the stadium. Right. I would have been cursing people. I would have cursed ushers for that performance. Yeah. It was terrible. You, you are 100% spot on. But there are two sides of the coin here. As a Chicago Bears Bears fan, I am sick to my stomach. We went 12 and four last year. Two of our four losses were in overtime, and uh, and just like we had so many positive vibes happening, we we replaced the kicker that double doinked and lost us the playoff game. It's a you know like you had so many high like just like high positives. Matt Nagy, Mitchell Trubisky going to have another year under his belt. You guys got to be sick by the performance that you had last night offensively. Yes. But now on the other side uh, of the coin, if you are a Green Bay Packers fan, you have to be the most optimistic looking forward that, that like, you can possibly be. Because it's the first time you've had a solid d- defense in what? At least five yeah. or six years since yeah. uh, since, a Clay, since since Clay Matthews and A.J. Hawk were second or third year in their league. Uh, after that, they went downhill and the Packers defense was horrible year in and like year out. Aaron, yeah. Aaron Rodgers had to carry that team. So if you are a Packers fan, you have to be ecstatic. We have a defense. Aaron Rodgers is 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 it, like he is going to click. Uh, we could go 12 and 4. I mean, it, it's, it's a very good yeah. poss- possibility for a Packers fan. But with all that being said, I got to ask you this question. I don't like preseason, preseason football whatsoever. I think it should be totally kicked out whatsoever but Aaron Rodgers did not take a single snap in the NFL preseason this year do you think this played an effect on his game last night it's possible listen I hate preseason football but let me just harken back to what I know Troy Aikman I watched Troy Aikman you know you would think Troy Aikman doesn't need the preseason right right but but you know what they did Jimmy Johnson and Barry Switzer with Chan Gailey whoever was the coaching Aikman they let Aikman play in three preseason games. The fourth one, no. That's for the backup to start and see what he's got. But Aikman played the first series of every preseason game. That's it. That's all you need. Get down there, and once in a while, Aikman and them, they might go, they go three and out, you wouldn't see them again. Right. And then once in a while, he'd get them down there, they'd kick a field goal, and then once in a while, it'd be boom, 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 uh, starter, start. They scored touchdown, seven, nothing. Aikman, Emmett, Irvin are on the bench. So, if there is going to be preseason, I would have let Aaron Rodgers play the first series of three of the games, just like we did, just like the Cowboys did with Aikman. Yeah. So I think I think that's a fair thing. I don't, but I really don't want it at all, to be honest. I, I'm I'm okay with. It. They look like crap. If they look like crap in game one, hell, they look like crap. I, I I'm not really I'm not I'm not I'm not really really worried about that, man. Listen, the 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 coaches like when they when they do when they scrimmage against other teams because they can control it. Right. And I like that too. Aaron Rodgers has already gone up against. Um, Oakland Raiders in practice, and he's already he's played. I mean, it's not like he. I mean, yes, I know it's not the live football and everything, but he's gone up against you know uh, because these guys scrimmage a couple of teams uh, right. in the in the preseason a year, so I think that's fine. I mean, you know, Trubisky's just got to be better. I don't want to give excuses on him about oh well, you didn't do preseason or whatever in the hell. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, no, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rod- listen, Aaron Rodgers is 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 a guy that he's not gonna give any excuses he looked rusty the first quarter then he started to look like Aaron Rodgers but he wasn't the fo- next game I, I expect him to look like Aaron Rodgers so that's your fault I mean I, I don't I'm gonna want to blame that on preseason that's your fault if you're rusty Mitchell Trubisky Aaron Rodgers you're right and then just let me add one just go ahead go ahead say something I'm gonna add a disclaimer on now go ahead well how was it like how was going to add to to your point there but like even though g- game one or week one you can look and play bad 
but week one games are just as important as, as like weeks as week 16 games. And especially with the inner division game, such as the Packers versus the bears, like you have to come out and you have to perform. So, so for the Chicago bears and for the green Bay Packers, you knew all summer who you were going to play. You were going to play the Chicago bears. This could be this loss for the Chicago bears could be the difference between a division championship or a division run or up and- week one can make that decision. You should have been able yes, to play. Real, you should have been prepared, knocked off the rust, yes. whatever you you had to do. You should have been right. prepared. And, and, and guess what? Let me let you on a little seek, little little nugget here. Uh, guess who? Guess who was watching their games last night? Was licking their chops and watching that Chicago Bears offensive line and just how they look. Guy by the name of Von Miller and Bradley Chubb. Chicago <laughs> goes to Mile High Stadium next Sunday at three twenty-five. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 this will be the, the Bradley Chubb will have two sacks. Von Miller will have two sacks. Uh, I, I predicted Bradley Chubb and Von Miller to have at least 25 to 30 sacks combined. And this game, the Bears game, I'll pre- they're going to have fun playing this game. Right. Oh, and real quick, I got breaking news. Tyreek Hill just signed a three-year extension. Kansas City Chiefs Tyreek Hill signed a three-year extension, $54 million. $18 million a year, $35 million guaranteed. That's a big deal for a kid where he came from yes. at, a, at, a, at a not a big college who's five foot nine. Five foot ten, if that, on with cleats on, uh, with fastest player in the NFL, and uh, he's climbed up that ladder, and he's become, in my opinion, a top five NFL wide receiver, and uh, he just got rewarded with fifty four million dollars over three years. So th- this is breaking news. I I, got, I didn't know anything about that. I don't yeah. have a TV uh, off to my side or like anything, just like right. that. So uh, as a Kansas City Chiefs fan, I'm glad we locked down our guy for the next three or four years. That is fantastic news, but do not can 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 Kansas Chiefs do not price yourself out of the market with all these players that we have to sign coming up. We still have to sign, uh, you know, uh, Kelsey. We have to sign an offensive line. Uh, Patrick yeah. Mahomes. Uh, this is his third year, so he has only two years left on his rookie contract still. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully, we have some more salary cap room to play with in the 2021 yeah. season. So. Hopefully. You're a hundred percent right, Mike. I'm going to agree with you on that very much. So, um, but Tyree kill is such a transit transcendent you're, talent you're right. that you have to like, if this was just a real, really good receiver, I would say, no, let's take care of Mahomes. Yeah. Let's take care of offensive line, you know, but this guy is, I mean, you know, he's, he's a five foot nine Julio Jones, but better. Right. I mean, yeah. this guy's ridiculous. Yeah. 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 So you I, are hundred percent correct. And, like, yeah, I, I was I'd actually just exception to the rule on him. Yeah, like I was actually just just watching uh, the NFL brutal plays on a YouTube right right before we started the show, and Tyree Kill was on there almost every other play. You know, he is a yeah. he is di- he is a dynamic player in the open yeah. field. You you can get him on on swing passes on like on reverse punt returns, kickoffs. You know, you put him anywhere and he is going to perform. I mean, he's definitely well worth the fifty four million dollars. But I hope we can sign people a- like around him so they don't start bracket coveraging or anything just right. like that. Um, so with all that being said, speaking of big wide receivers that 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 have gotten signed, and uh, and Antonio Brown and the Oakland Raiders signed a big offseason deal this summer or last summer, I guess you can say. Ever since then, it's been nothing but issues. You've had a helmet issue, you've had frostbite, and now you have him fighting with the general manager in the locker room after practice. What are your thoughts on this, Marcus? Are the are the Oakland Raiders going to release Antonio Brown? Well, I'm hearing that if they suspend him for a game, they have an out on the contract or something where they don't have to pay him at all and they can just release him and save twenty nine plus million dollars. Ridiculous. I mean, it's something to consider. I'll be honest with you. You know, owners and coaches and all that. When you sign a great player, you know, you always ask, you know, is the reward worth the trouble? that you get, you always like weigh the pros and cons in that regard. And I think, you know, when they signed him, I actually think, look, they, they heard a lot of good news about him in terms of You're right. he's a, he's a, he's a hard worker in practice and all that stuff. And he comes to play game day, you know? So I, I, I don't see any fault in them in signing him. People are getting mad that they signed him, but you knew what you were going to get. Yes. To a certain extent you did, but they didn't think the guy was just going to be a flake. You wonder if he wants to still play football right. with all the shenanigans he's Let me he's add doing. to your point there. Uh, just in the ESPN interview back in March when he first signed with o- o- Oakland, or like I, I don't think he was even signed yet, he, like he said that he doesn't need football anymore. Football needs him. So just to add to your point there. 
And, 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 and yes, you're 100% right. He was talking like, oh, I got enough money and all that. You know what you can tell? And I'm going to get a little personal here, and I don't care if anybody doesn't like it or not. Um, you can tell he doesn't have a good woman with him or a wife. Right. You can tell that. I can tell that easily. You can tell they didn't show her in hard. They, they didn't show her in hard knocks. Um, you think a, a, a good woman would say, would tell him, honey, calm down. Do not say anything silly. You're going to make a lot of money. Go play football. You love this game. Mm -hmm. And if you want to retire in two years, that's fine. You know, a woman would be telling you stuff like this. A, a good a good woman, a good yes. support and, system and, of a, yeah, of a and woman. And he's not getting, he doesn't, you can tell he, he's a wild child and he doesn't have any of that. Yeah. I can tell. I can tell by watch. I could tell by watching Hard Knocks because they get a little personal there. Right. And I could just tell by a shenanigan. So I wonder if he wants to play football. And you know, he in one day he thinks he's just some Billy badass right now. He, you know, he's got an accumulation. He may have thirty million dollars in the bank or whatever. You watch when he's about forty something, he's gonna say, "Damn man, I should have played those two years." Right. Or I should have, you know. And this is also gonna hurt his Hall of Fame. He won't be in the Hall of Fame if no. he doesn't play. Yeah. Now, if he just kind of. If his lasting memory is cussing out Mike Mayock and 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 the foot issue, helmet issue, I think I think the NFL, if he gets in, it'll be when I'm 70 and he'll get in on that uh on the on the old timers clause. He'll be like 50 or something. He'll go, oh yeah, Antonio Brown was good. And they'll forget the headaches and they'll just remember the player right. on the field. You know, people, you know, time heals a lot of things. Maybe it doesn't heal death, but it heals a lot of things. And so he might get in on the but he won't get in like he's supposed to get in, like maybe second ballot, third ballot. I don't think he's first team. But this hurts him. Like I said, you wonder if he wants to play. I mean, and and you know what? I, I wouldn't – I don't think – listen, the guy's too too big of a talent to release. If you really want to win in this league, uh, David Carr, I know he's got Tyrell Williams now. They're, they drafted a really good running back. They need Antonio Brown to win football games. They really do. I mean – I, it doesn't. The Pittsburgh Steelers don't. They got Juju Smith-Schuster right. and James Washington and Big Ben Roethlisberger, and 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 that's what makes that's what makes the Pittsburgh Steelers amazing in their drafting. They could lose a Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown, and it doesn't matter. They're still supposed to get to the Super Bowl. That's incredible to me. The Oakland Raiders are not there yet, so I don't think they can lose an Antonio Brown and expect to go ten and six or nine and seven. And to, without Antonio Brown, they'll go five and eleven. They'll be in the cellar dweller again. And just be looking for another receiver next year. So I don't think they'll release him. I think I, I think that if he if he uh if he apologizes and and and, and gets there week two because he's going to be suspended week one. Uh, if he gets there week two and finishes out the season and plays really hard like we know Antonio Brown can, you know I don't think I don't, I don't think they're going to release him. But if this thing, let me tell you something. If this thing gets more into the bizarre, and like say he doesn't report for week two unless he wants an apology for Mike Mayock. Or something crazy like that? No, yeah. no, they'll release them then. Yeah, you're oh, you're gone you're 100 correct. So, yeah. uh, I talked about this yesterday on a different show, and uh, I, I was listening or I was watching NFL Live on ESPN, and they had Steve y Young on talking about the situation, right. and like he said, what they did in San Francisco was they treat superstars like superstars, and other players just like other. Right. Hires, meaning that if this was in the old days, and this would not be this would not be an issue at all because Antonio Brown would be, be treated like a god there, and he could do no wrong, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I think that is exactly wrong because the the Raiders are a horrible team. They aren't very good. Last last year they were what three and third three and thirteen I think it was yeah. so they don't have any room to let people slide they have right. to lay down the law like this is the Raider way just like it is the Patriot way like it is the Steeler way or you know just like any other team like you have to lay right. lay 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 down the law but I want to go a different route uh, this time this time around maybe just maybe because Antonio Brown. Did not play any preseason games. He finally just found a helmet. Maybe his feet aren't totally told, told healed yet. Maybe this, maybe him blowing up at the general manager, trying to get suspended for for a week, gives him an extra week to get prepared for the season. Because right now, I don't think he's ready for the season. I don't I mean like I got to know how long frostbite takes to heal. But I saw the pictures of his feet, and they are gross. They were gross, so maybe he's just not ready to like play, and and like this is his this is his 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 way out by getting suspended 
because he's not ready to play. Uh, so, so, so his worth ethic doesn't get into get into question. His off-season preparedness doesn't get into question to try to save some some face a little bit. Yeah, well, if, you, if that's true, then he went the wrong way about it. You don't cuss out Mike Mayock, dude. Like, Mike Mayock's a good man, dude. He's a yes. good dude. I mean, he's, a, he's, he's a great, great talent evaluator. I mean, I don't, I don't see how. It's been, and if they don't suspend him, have you? Is there a clarification? He is suspended game one, like that's written in stone. Because mm-hmm. if they don't, yeah, if yeah. they don't, that'll look really bad on the Oakland Raiders. He has to be suspended at least game one. Yesterday, uh, John Gruden and then Mike Mayock both said that they don't that they don't have any information. They were going to review it more on Friday. Well, today's Friday. It's it's what eleven o'clock there on the West Coast, yeah. give or take a couple hours. Uh, so we should know something by today. Uh, I want to know something by today so I can set my fantasy team, but <laughs> that is besides the point. But like, yeah. I think you are correct that they will not release Antonio Brown. Cooler's head will prevail. Mike Mayock and John Gruden are going to realize that they need him. I also suspect that Derek Carr will go into Mike Mayock's office and, and, and like and like be like like look, I'll take Antonio Brown under my wing. I will calm him down because let's face it, Derek Carr has to have a great season in an Oakland yeah. Raider uniform for him to have a job next year. It is simple as that. And he needs he needs Antonio Brown on that team to have a great season, whether you want to win a minute or not. So I think Coors heads are going to to prevail. He he may not get a full game suspension. I'm I, I, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say he gets a half, half a suspension. I mean, you know, if you think about the behavior, it's borderline ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, think about if he Superstar did have behavior. a – Yeah, I mean, if he said, let's just say he did have a wife and he walked through the door. Can you imagine what she would – what are you doing? You just lost us a million, two million dollar game check for $55,000, and you're the one that caused the $55,000 not showing up, not doing this, not doing – that would be like – she probably could tell him that would be like me telling my boss – I'm showing up late and I didn't go to work here and they just charged me $5. It's equivalent to your 55,000. Right. And, you, and I'm right. going to complain about that. You have to be a freaking idiot to complain about that, dude. Something is going on. Either the Steelers were putting a steel curtain up and blocking all of these antics, not releasing anything. Yeah. Or something has just clicked in, clicked in his head where he thinks he's the greatest thing to walk this earth. I want to say the Steelers were putting up a great front because this has been going on for a while. Because what he's 12, 13 years in the league, I mean, it, it has to be going on for a while. Like this just can't come up just like this. I, I took a lot. I took a lot of flack for a few years ago when he went Facebook Live and and gave the mic and and, and let Mike Tomlin speech out yeah. about yeah. we're going to kill the Patriots and all that and talked about the different opponents. Uh, they just beat. I think they had just beaten Kansas City. Right. It was. It was after the Chiefs game and it was a big game. Uh, they beat Alex Smith and, and the Chiefs. I remember that. And I, I, I took a lot of flack on social media because I said that I – you remember that, the Facebook Live thing? Yes, yes. Okay. I, 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 I thought about releasing him then. I would have called him into my office and said, hey, dude, let me just let you in on a little secret. We're, you know, one more slip up. You're on double secret. One more, And you will get released. And I don't care if it's as little as hitting a teammate with a fucking towel. You're out of here. Right. You don't do those kinds of things. Can you imagine? I'm going to flip the script on you because I love doing this to people. <laughs> Can you imagine if me and you work together? Right. And your secret conversation to me and our staff, and I put it out there on the news about what you said about the opposing coach, you think, would you fire me? I would yes. be very upset. Yes. I, I know. I'd expect yeah. you to, I wouldn't even show up. I'd right. expect you to <laughs> just send me an email. You're done, dude. Like, how stupid is that? It, it How is, stupid it is, is that? not it is not smart at all. <laughs> that's so that's I, sure. I thought about listen, I, I said I, I might release him. I took a lot of shit from the millennials on, on social media, the big babies. Oh, <laughs> don't do it. He didn't he didn't know that's just what they do now. I mean, people today will defend the indefensible. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. It but is yeah, proof, I, so, point so, proven is the is the whole yeah. Lamar Jackson debate that we had a little while ago. I oh, still yeah. get flack for flack for that. So and, and let me just let you in on a little secret. He's not better than Mitchell Trubisky, and Mitchell Trubisky has a long way to go. Right. So Lamar, Lamar Jackson is still 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 trash. But yeah. he was still good in college. I 
I give him that. He was good at Louisville. But speaking of the college game, week are you counting this as week two or week three in the college? Uh, this is week three for this me. I hate three. when they do that week zero yeah, crap. That, that, that's dumb. So week this is three. The third week, week three. This is the third week for me that right. I can watch college football. This is week, week three for me. You're, you're 100% correct. So week three, have two big games that are happening. Uh, first one, I, uh, first one, your hat says it all there. LSU take on the Texas Longhorns. Probably the biggest game of the weekend. Uh, who do you got? Man, I'm I'm taking UT. I, 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 I yeah. I mean, I I think that uh, uh, I think UT can pull it off. I, I really do. Um, they they listen. I think they're back. I really you know they're 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 minus a few running backs um, this week, but. Uh, Man, I'm a believer in Sam Ellinger. I, I really am. This, this kid, like, yes. you know, I don't want to say Tebow. You know, people think that Tebow's the greatest college quarterback. No, he's not. But Tebow's top ten. So, um, I, I, you know, Sam Ellinger is, is got some Tebow in him, but he can throw the ball better than Tebow. So, this is, I, I, I'm a believer in Sam Ellinger. Texas receivers are outrageous. The offensive line's good. I mean, LSU is th- – th- this Texas is the real deal. Texas has some good defensive backs. We're good on – we're good up front, led by Malcolm Roach, number 32 in your Texas program. Listen, and I know LSU is fabulous too. They get the recruits. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying anything against LSU, but the way I pick it is, I think this is a home and home, and I think Texas got the gets the first crack at it. It's at it's in Baton Rouge next year, so I'm probably gonna pick LSU unless Texas is just some juggernaut, you right. know. Which I don't. I think they're back, but I'm, they're not a juggernaut. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, I'm gonna take Texas in a close one. This one will be really, really close, and you know we're talking you know 38, you know 38, 37 type stuff, game-winning field goal type stuff. I think this one comes down to the wire, um, and, and LSU is pretty, pretty, pretty damn good too. So th- this one, man, this is must-see TV. No wonder College Game Day is there because this is really good stuff. Right. So just to add to your point, point, point there, Ellington is a pretty darn good quarterback. I, I don't think he's Hyman Trophy type winning quarterback, but he fits that Texas system almost perfect. And yeah. uh, they couldn't have done a better job of getting him to to Texas. Now, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate about this, but I think LSU is just an average team. They benefit from being in the SEC and playing weak opponents 60% of the time. When I, really? when I say weak opponents, look at the SEC. You have Alabama, you have LSU, and then you have everybody else. Like Alabama and LSU and Georgia, uh, like you've got you, you to throw Georgia in the mix. Those, those three teams have been carrying the SEC for so long. It has been those three and then the rest of the conference. And then like LSU has benefited from being in the middle. And, you know, they play Alabama well. They've beaten Georgia once or twice in the last few few years, but but then they play Vanderbilt, then they play a horrible Tennessee team. Then you know they're 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 playing weaker opponents, and this is their finally a a uh, a test outside the SEC. And I don't think they are ready to go into Texas uh, and uh, Austin, I should say, and uh, beat the Longhorns. It is tough to play in Austin. Any Big 12 team that plays at home, I'm giving the Big the Big 12 team advantage because the Big 12 home is tough to play. Yes. So I, I'm I, I'm going to pick Texas, and I'd like your 36 to 37 seven score, but I'm going to say 35 36 Texas. I think okay. Texas is going to just uh, run up the score on them. I mean, it, it is going to be a high scoring lights out game. No, this is this is one that everybody's going to gather around and watch. This is going to be a hard hitting football game. I like Ed Orjan. I've always liked Ed Orjan. He's just always been more of the football coach and not the big CEO. I don't know if you remember Coach Ed Orjan uh, from uh, Mississippi. Remember that movie, The Blind Side? Yes. Okay, Coach Ed Orjan was the Mississippi coach, and so you know when when uh, what's his name, the the Blind Side kid. Oh my God, I don't know why I rem- can't remember his Michael name. Orr. He's a, Michael Orr. He's a first round pick to the Baltimore Ravens when Michael Orr uh, the uh, went to uh, uh, Mississippi. Ed, Ed, Big Ed O was his coach. Big Ed Orjan. He sounds so funny too. He sounds yeah. like a like a Muppet character or something. Right. But uh, look look for look for. I'll give you a little nugget here. Look for two safeties in this game. One off each team. Caden Stearns, 
sophomore from Texas, he can't go in this NFL draft. But if he was to go in this NFL draft, he'd be a top 20 pick. But the best safety in college football uh, relies in Baton Rouge, and that's Grant Delpit, uh, big-time safety. So I think he'll intercept Ellinger and make some big hits, and he could turn the game around, Grant Delpit. He is a top 10 pick in this year's draft. I think I got him somewhere around 8 or 9. Okay. Um, he's the real deal. And Caden Stearns, the safety from Texas, is the real deal. But he's only a sophomore. He won't be in the 2020 draft. He'll be in the 2021 draft. And I expect, uh, I expect uh, Caden Stearns to pick off Joe Burrows once or twice. Um, big time, big time, both big time athletes. And so Grant Delpit's put together a little better. He's a year or two older. Um, like I said, he'll be a top 10 pick. So two safeties in this, in, in this game, one for each team, will, I'm predicting will each have an interception or a big hit that will change this game. Okay. I like big hits and I like big intercepts. So <laughs> I really hope forward to those uh, to those predictions coming true. Speaking of people that are not eligible for the NFL draft this season, Trevor Lawrence is only a true sophomore, so yeah. he's still not eligible for the uh, NFL draft. But right. a but the second biggest game of the weekend, or you can even say like a one A one B type of thing. You have Clemson takes on Texas A and M. Uh, obviously, Clemson is is the defending national championships with 14 and 0. Trevor Lawrence hasn't lost a game as a starting quarterback. Who do you got in this game? Upset alert! Upset special. I got Texas A and M 30, Clemson 27. I'll go ahead and do that right now. Um, I Kellen Mond, the a Texas A and M quarterback, he has he's one of the prettiest throwers of the football I've seen in college in a while. That thing he he can throw that thing on a rope, moving right left. Um, if you give him time in the pocket, he can find people. I really, I really like him. I was not impressed at all with Clemson's first uh, game out the box, and I'm almost forgetting who they played. It wasn't even a big game. I, think, I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was Georgia Tech. Yeah. Um, good opponent, but they're not Texas A&M. Um, and, and Trevor Lawrence didn't impress me at all. I don't know what. Let, let, let me tell you something. If he, Texas A&M's defense is better than Georgia Tech's defense, so Trevor Lawrence, if he doesn't improve after last week, will be in for a rude awakening. But Trevor Lawrence does have the – man, does he have the talent around him too? Uh, NTN, NTN, however you say his name, number nine for uh, uh, Clemson, that running back is a freaking beast. I yes, mean, that dude – he is great. That dude is, that dude is flat out special. And then number five, I, I, I'm forgetting his name, the wide receiver. Um, I think it's T. Higgins. Yeah, T. Higgins. Uh, why was he wears number five for Clemson? That dude is a top 15 NFL draft pick. So Trevor Lawrence has the players around him. Clemson, remember, they lost all five of their star, of their defensive linemen, four defensive linemen, and I think, and they lost Big Albert Huggins to the Texas to the Texans. Uh, he was their fifth. He was their a de facto fifth starter. Right. If anybody was out, out Big Albert Huggins would come in. They lost all five of their defensive linemen. And they were okay, you know, the, the, the replacements. They, these guys recruit really well. Dabo Sweeney recruits four- and five-star recruits, so they're going to be just fine. But I'm going to pull the, I, I, the upset right here. I think Texas A&M will beat Clemson. It, they're a 19-point underdog, and I can't – man, let me tell you something. You're Texas A&M. You're the University of Texas A&M. Think about how big time that school is. Yeah. You should never be a 19-point underdog to anybody. Right. Think about – that, that's ridiculous. I don't care who you're playing. Clemson, Alabama, maybe 10, 11, 19. I mean, they, they think you suck. I mean, 19, <laughs> they think you suck. And so, it's at Texas at, and it's at Texas A&M, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, I right? mean, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not even sure where the game is at. I know they played last year, and it was 28-26. A&M just lost by two points. 28-26, Clemson barely escaped that game. I don't, I don't think they escaped this game. I don't care if it's at Death Valley. I don't care. I think Texas Texas A&M, they already have players that are predicting upset. They're, they're predicting that they're going to win. I'm, I'm with those players. Uh, I'm going to take Texas A&M 30 to 27. And Trevor Lawrence throws another couple interceptions, just like he did against Georgia Tech. Okay, so I just looked, in it, and they're playing at Clemson this year, yeah. actually. Uh, so I thought the game yeah, was, was at Texas A&M. Uh, if this game was was at Texas, Texas A&M, I would be on your – horse picking the upset all day long because I remember when Texas A&M was in the Big 12 I used to watch them all the time that crowd was crazy I played there it was the most um, nerve-wracking place to play because the fans are literally you know 
10 feet f f from you. They're wiggling their, their, their fingers. They're in their army suits. It is a very intimidating place to, to, yeah. to, 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 to play. Uh, it's on my bucket list, College Station, yes. Kyle Field. It, you'd be amazed. I've been to a lot of football games, and that's one I haven't gotten to yet, and that's on my bucket list. Yeah, it, it, is, a, it, it is a beautiful field. It's a beautiful atmosphere. With that being said, Clemson – uh luckily for a luckily for a and m the game isn't at night it is a three o'clock game if it was at night clemson does not lose at death valley at night plain and right. simple whatsoever with, with all that being said i'm going to go with clemson but if we're picking the spread what you said it was a 19 point spread 19. i believe like was it i'm taking texas a&m and the points all day long yeah. they are not going to beat them by 29 points by three scores it's 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 not going to happen you guys that's almost three touchdowns do you yeah. wrap your head around that a 12th ranked texas a&m team is not going to lose to clemson by nine by nine by nine yeah, by nine, 19 points but i do like the score from last year the 27 to 21 score because of the defense that texas a&m does bring with Trevor Lawrence having a maybe a sophomore slump, maybe just starting the year off right, or like yeah. on the wrong foot, they did they did beat Georgia Tech in Week One, but Georgia yeah. Tech has got a brand new head coach. They are rebuilding. Georgia Tech will be good in three or four years, but right now they're a two win team. To be totally honest, right. Uh, but with all that being said, I like Clemson winning this this game, twenty one to twenty. It is going to come down to a last second missed field goal by Texas A&M kicker he's going to doink it off the right upright it's going to fall down it's going to be game over so clemson does win they escape uh what does lee corso say uh you know he has some escape thing that like he says they escape they survive <laughs> and win and they right. after this week look for clemson to really improve though so this is gonna be scary right. so no, I, I'm 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 with you on that one. I mean, last year's game was 28-26. That was the final score, and and AM and A &M, you know, they played Clemson right there, and they, and AM that was a better Clemson team that they played. So yeah. I, I I'll go ahead and pick the other, and oh, most definitely, if me and you were sitting in Vegas, we would take Texas A&M plus the 19. I would throw in three paychecks on that. Like there is no yeah, way they're I winning would. by nine by nine, 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 19 points. Right. Uh, with all that being said, you know, week one in the NFL season is starting uh, uh, you can say it started last night but let, let's let's be honest sunday afternoon at one o'clock eastern time that is when the nfl cc starts sunday right. afternoon games what is a must see game for you this weekend in the nfl schedule well i'm, I'm gonna little i'm gonna laugh for a second real quick i can tell you what it won't be <laughs> <laughs> go ahead wait i was just looking at this Did, i think i told you a couple weeks ago detroit at arizona right only degenerate gamblers and the and the and the wives and the moms and the grandmas will be watching this right. one. Even the this grandmas the, might even tune out, huh? The, the, uh, the, uh, no, I'll make a prediction. Uh, the Cowboys pre preseason game versus the Texans will get more ratings than this game. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, I mean that's that. Yeah, I mean Cowboys preseason will get more. Yeah, um, man, Pittsburgh, New England. That's something else right off the yep. bat. Sunday night football. That's a beast. I keep on hearing everybody new, on the New England bandwagon. They realize Gronk is not there, right? Uh, I don't know. Probably, probably not because he's always hurt. And have you seen Gronk lately? No. He looks like one of those um, white polar bears that's trying to find food, and they and they haven't <laughs> and they haven't eaten in about five months. He's uh, about two thirty, man. Losing dude, all that, that weight, dude huh? Like a two hundred and seventy pound machine. He looks like. <laughs> Hey, I, I look like I could walk by Gronk and hit him in the chest and cave in. <laughs> yeah, he. I, I, I would literally tell me he's trying to find food, man. Like one of the pol the polar bears, you know, how they're they're scrounging for food. That's yep. what he looks like. Yeah. Um. So, <laughs> so Tom Brady. <laughs> hey, Tom Brady. Tom Brady doesn't have that guy to throw to anymore. And that and the kid I like, Keneal Harry, their first round pick at Arizona State, is not playing Week One. So I don't know, man. I, I think Pittsburgh gets them this game. This is must see TV for me. It's amazing. I think I said it earlier. Um, the Pittsburgh Steelers can lose Le'Veon Bell, uh, and they can lose Jackass, Jackass Brown, um, <laughs> and, and, and they can still people still predicting predicting them to win the Super Bowl. Think about that for a second. That's right. pretty powerful. I think Pittsburgh gets them Week One. I mean, th yeah. So I, I just I don't I th I think this is I'm, I've all, I've never disrespected New England by the way. Yeah. I've always because they remind me of the Spurs. 
But this is the first year you heard it here. I'm going to predict New England to go like nine and seven and, and, and not go. I think I've always predicted New England to go at least 11 and five. Right. So I think this is the first year it's going to be the nine and seven year. Like where everybody – and this is Tom Brady's final year. I'm going to predict it right now. So, um, yeah, I mean, no, no, it was hilarious if you've seen Gronk, man. Hey, can you imagine <laughs> that conversation? Uh, Brady's about to go meet with Gronk for dinner, right? Right. And then he's about to ask him to come back because they're like four and four, right? And then Gronk <laughs> passes right by him, and he doesn't recognize him. And he has to, like, tap him. Dude, I'm here. I go, who are you? He's like, who are you? Right. Oh my God! You Are you Gronk's little pounds, brother? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you lost forty pounds. I was going to ask you to come back, but let's let's start eating. Let's <laughs> let's get the right. Yeah, let's go to the buffets, dude. Let's, let's go to McDonald's together. and get that cheeseburger, man. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, uh, Gronk has quit working out. And listen, the, the Giants Cowboys. It's must see TV for me. Like it's, but really around the. I mean, around if I was not a Cowboy fan, I mean, dude, they're going to mollywop the Giants. The Giants are. Eli Manning, okay, Daniel Jones and Eli Manning will each throw four interceptions. How's that for a – There we go. They'll <laughs> yeah. throw, throw four interceptions a half. <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah, and, and then and then what, what's the name? Dave Gettleman will be saying, oh, we're fine. We're good. Right. Yeah. So um, <laughs> so I definitely like that pick. One, like the, that, that is probably – Probably the game of the game of the week, I think, or the, like of the of of the week one. Um, I do like the Houston's and Houston's versus Saints on the yes. Monday night game, the early game. I believe it's like at six o'clock the kickoff. But the game I am most intrigued to watch. I'm not talking Kansas City Chiefs. I'm not talking the Cowboys. You know, those are our two teams. Right. I'm talking Titans and Browns. I want to see if the okay. Browns are the real deal. I want to see if Odell Beckham Jr. is, you know, as advertised as if like if Baker Mayfield going to continue to take steps forward, uh, as I think he like I think he will. He'll be a top a top one a top tier quarterback here by the end of the year. I I, I, I think yeah. he is like he's a real is the real deal. And I oh want to see God. if the Titans are going to be any good. If their defense is 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 going to step up. There are people saying that their defense is the best defense in the league. I want to see it. This is the one o'clock game. Uh, it, I believe is on CBS. Like this is the game that I want to circle and and I'm going to sit down and like and like watch it. I'm going to dissect it play by play by play. But then I also I'm curious about the Colts Chargers too. Is yeah. Bursette the real deal? Because I I believe he signed a uh, twenty million dollar ex like extension. So the Colts are saying you are our guy. But they have also signed uh, uh, Hoyer as well, uh, the Patriots' backup quarterback. So I'm curious of how short of leash Bursette is on for the Colts, uh, and if the Colts can really survive without Andrew Luck or yeah. not. So those are definitely no, no. Two I, big I, I'm, games. I'm with you, man. That oh my God, are we gonna? I, I, if if the Browns score like 45 points and Odell Beckham has two touchdowns and Jarvis Landry has two touchdowns and Baker Mayfield's running around. Oh my God! The monster will have been created. Yeah. You you, you think Antonio Brown's bad? Wait till Odell <laughs> Beckham starts catching like 15 touchdowns a year. You know he'll he'll stand up on the Cleveland Stadium and say, "You guys better catch me, or I'll go to another team." Right. You know he's that. It, it'll be that terrible. Right. So I mean, I, and I'm predicting that. I'm predicting the Browns because of Baker Mayfield. He throws people open. He's a hell yep. of a quarterback. So I think the monsters will be created Sunday. I think they're gonna. Whoop the hell out of Tennessee, and a game that you that you you know you kind of glossed over because it's your team, man. Kansas City at Jacksonville, like if you let's just think about think about that for a second. That's about as night and night and day as you can get from Detroit versus Arizona. Yeah. Okay. Right. Listen, you got the two best corners in my opinion on the same team. Maybe not the best corner. I don't know. I got to look into that. It could be, but I'm talking about as a tandem, AJ Bouye and Jalen Ramsey. Right. I mean. Uh, against McCole Hardman and and Tyreek Hill and Sammy Watkins, that to me is must see TV. Okay. okay, I mean these guys, you got you got these you got the Kansas City Chiefs receivers running four threes, and AJ Bouye and and Jalen Ramsey think they're the best tandem, and I do too. That to me, okay, over under, AJ Bouye and Jalen Ramsey in game one over under one and a half interceptions for both. Oh, like under. in other words, no. no. No, under. no, no, no. What? No, no. I'm talking about combined. Under. Under. Okay. They're not going to get like, any interceptions. You know, they're not going to be any. Okay. Listen. Here, this is where I'm going. I think that Kansas City can score so many points and 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 kick and 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 because I, I respect AJ Bowie and and, and Jalen Ramsey. I think that it can go over 
And I think because if they go over, that means A.J. Bowie has two touch, two interceptions or Jalen Ramsey, or they each, they each have one. Right. And so if they each have one, that's two interceptions and went over the one and a half, right? I think that Mahomes could throw two interceptions but throw four touchdowns and Kansas City still win. That's how much of an error rate it's going to be. Well, like, see, see, I, I'm going to go on the opposite side of the coin there. I think yeah. Patrick, because if 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 we were talking about year two, Patrick, yes, I would I, I would agree with you 100 percent because he would always try to fit in those tight those tight window yeah. passes. This year, he understands that hey, I cannot fit those passes into those tight windows all like like all like all the time. I have a I, I, I have a tight end that is great as a dump down. I have right. LaShawn McCoy coming out of the b- 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 backfield, and I have Tyreek Hill running down the field for yeah. eighty plus eighty plus yards. That middle of the field is going to be so wide open, and those two corner, corner cornerbacks are going to be chasing the guys down the yeah. field. That the middle of the field is it is going to be open. Am I saying Patrick Mahomes won't throw any touchdowns? Right. I'm not saying that whatsoever. But I'm saying the the interceptions will come from the safeties or the linebacker right. spot. They won't come from the cornerback spot. And real quick, big loss for Jacksonville in free agency. Tashawn Gibson, their free safety, who yeah. covers tight ends about as well as anybody in football. I'm not saying he's great and one of the greatest of all time, but he's good. He would cover tight ends for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He is now a Houston Texan. Deshaun Gibson, number 39 um, in your program there. They don't have that this year. Jacksonville doesn't have that. They really needed Deshaun Gibson week one to cover Kelsey. They don't have that right now. They got some kid named Wilson, and he's not as good as Gibson. So that's a big loss um, for the Jacksonville Jaguars right there. And and, and real quick, I just want to say one thing real quick, and this is pretty funny. This kind of ties into the Chiefs. Think about two months ago. When Tyreek Hill looked like down in the dumps, right, right, release him. He's beating up people and everything else, right, right. And then Antonio Brown looked like, oh, the new signing, <laughs> it's awesome. Man, has that table turned? Antonio Brown looks like the piece of crap, right. And Tyreek Hill has ascended into a fifty-four million dollar player, and he's making more per year now than Antonio Brown will. There we go. So just amazing what a, a, a couple of months can do, and. And one guy do the right thing, and one guy and 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 toe the line, and one guy act like a jackass, and then look what happens to your money. And 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 also, it is amazing how overreacting to a situation gets you to this place where you are ultimately supposed to be. Because people were calling for the Kansas City Chiefs to cut Tyree Kill the minute that tape came out, or the I, I I should say the allegation came out. There was no evidence out there yet. It, it, like it was just somebody saying he is getting. Uh, looked into for child abuse and people yeah. were saying cut him re- re- release him now he is I mean yeah. he still is the one one of the best wide receivers in the National Football League now he's getting paid like and I'm yes. glad he's a can- Kansas City Chiefs because those same people that are calling to cut him are, are they would they would have been the same people that are calling for the Raiders to pay him up the Browns to pay him up so yeah you, yeah you, you you know what would have happened if they would have released Tyreek Hill that day that everybody was saying cut him yeah he'd be a New England Patriot right now and you'd be sick to your stomach and I'd have to change my New England pick from nine and seven back to twelve and four yeah and then Kansas City we'd be sitting there you'd be sitting there with no Tyreek Hill it would be you'd be sick to your stomach it'd be stupid. So I'm glad they did the right thing. Think about this. Think about if the Kansas City Chiefs would never have listened to anybody and kept Kareem Hunt still, you know, just to put him on the pup list. And then they shined LaShawn still. They still have Tyreek Hill. They have Sammy Watkins. And they had the same draft. Think about how explosive that offense would be. It would be be unreal. I'm with you. I'm with with you. But Kansas City running backs – Tyreek Hill is more important, really important. Running backs are kind of like a dime a dozen. You got Damian Williams. We have three, <laughs> four of them yeah, now. Yeah, you got, yeah, you got Damian Williams, and 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 yeah, I mean, dude, you're Kansas City's fine. I mean, uh, so I, yeah, I'm not, and then yeah, so I'm not even not even worried about that. But I, I get your point though. Your point is well taken. Yeah. So guys, that is going to be it for today's show. Uh, we are going to obviously take the weekend off. Uh, enjoy Week One NFL football. Hug the kid, kiss the wife. We'll see you Monday. We have two games to talk about on Monday where we have the uh, Oakland yeah, Raiders football. versus the Broncos and Houston versus Saints. So, guys, join us yeah. Monday. Like, comment, subscribe. Share this with a couple friends. Uh, we'll see you guys Monday. Have a good weekend. Happy.